Welcome, pool guys and gals, to the Let's Talk About Pools podcast, where your host, Lauren Broom, will take a splash into many topics in the pool industry to educate all aquatic professionals. Listen in, and you just might be surprised what you'll learn. So let's jump right in. Welcome, everybody, today to the Let's Talk About Pools podcast. And on episode 34, we're going to talk about the special employment situation that is happening within the industry. Um, We have Julie Sevilla, one of her podcast guests, with the David Posnack JCC. She's on the more parks and recreation side. And we have Gary Heath, owner of Pool Doctors out in California, and he'll be representing the pool service, pool industry side. So we'll hear the struggles and what maybe some solutions are from both sides of the table because it's the same but yet different for both of those sides of the pool industry. So this is going to be an interesting episode. Maybe we'll shed some light on some things that maybe some people haven't thought of. So I really hope you enjoy this podcast episode. And I want to say thank you to our sponsors of this episode, Base Crete and Blu-ray Etzel. Thank you for continuing education through the podcast. So let's jump right in, guys. My main podcast sponsor today, I want to say thank you to Vito Mariano and Base Crete. If you want to know anything about waterproofing concrete and your concrete pools or anything about concrete, he's where you need to go. You need to go to his website. You need to call him. You need to contact him. He is probably the most knowledgeable person I've ever met and has a very long resume. So thank you, Base Crete, for continuing education through the podcast and being a podcast sponsor. Welcome, everybody, today to the Let's Talk About Pools podcast. And this is a really special episode. Um, I'll be speaking with Gary Heath, who's the owner of The Pool Doctor out of San Francisco, California. And I'll also be talking to Julie Sevilla on this episode, which this is a roundtable episode. She works as the aquatics director for David Posnack, JCC, out of Davie, Florida. They're a nonprofit that they have a aquatic venue there, a swimming pool. And we'll get into what you guys have there as well available to people. So this is a special episode on the employment issues that are occurring within the aquatic industry. Um, So Julie will be representing kind of that parks and recreation side. And uh, Gary is going to be representing our swimming pool industry uh, service builders that whole side. Um, So we have two great people on both sides of the fence, very different, but dealing with some very similar issues um, that we're seeing right now in the pool industry overall from the economy. So I want to hand it over to Julie first. Um, Just give us some little details that I didn't give that you'd like the audience to know about you. Hi, good morning. And I'm super happy to be on your podcast. Um, First time doing a podcast, so bear with me. (laughs) Anyway, so we are, um, I'm the aquatics director at um, a JCC. We are a fitness facility. Um, We have a preschool. We from six months through pre-K. We have an after school program within our preschool. We run an after school program for our elementary age kids from kindergarten on up. We have a summer camp that we have anywhere between 750 to 800 campers on site every day for eight weeks during the summertime. Um, We cater to a large population of uh, children and adults with special needs. Um, Throughout the year, we have programs um, as well as within our summer camp. We also cater to um, a large senior population. So we offer classes, lunches, programming um, for our, and fitness classes for our seniors as well. But here at the pool, um, we are a membership driven community center. Uh, we are open to the community as well. And there's different prices, you know, there's a price differential between, you know, if you want to partake in swimming lessons here um, as a member, non-member rate, um, we swim year round. Obviously we're in South Florida, so it is hot. 
our pool is heated in the winter time. And um, I thankfully have not been hit too hard with COVID, you know, as far as um, being able to be busy, I have been swamped, thank God. Um, once we reopened after we were all closed for those three months, I gave it a few weeks to kind of figure out what we were doing and how we were moving forward after going on, like I'm sure many of you did, Zoom after Zoom after Zoom with different agencies um, when that time when we were all home. And I just hit the ground after finding out about, you know, in that three months, 50, 60 children had lost their lives due to drowning. I didn't care. And I just hit the pool running literally <laughs> and was swamped with doing uh, private swimming lessons or small group lessons with siblings or families that, that were comfortable bringing, you know, coming in with their own little pods. Um, and then within our, within our membership here and within our preschool and after school program, doing swimming lessons with them. Wow. Um, that's a busy, busy, busy. You guys. I was super busy. Schedule. Yeah. It was yeah. great. So I also have Gary Heath here. Tell us a little bit about you, Gary. Uh, thank you, Lauren. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm my happy to have is, you here. My company is the pool doctor. Uh, we have been in business since 1956 in the East Bay area of San Francisco. And uh, we service hundreds and hundreds of commercial and residential swimming pools. And uh, we're, we're a large service and repair company. We don't build pools. Um, we only clean, maintain, repair, upgrade existing properties. So it sounds like you're as busy as Julie is, just in a different way. Uh, Julie touches one pool a thousand times a week. I touch a thousand different pools one time a week. So, <laughs> yep, that's why you're both here because we've got different sides of the fence when it comes to the aquatic industry. Yeah. So, I thank you guys for being here today for our employment issues roundtable and how it affects the aquatic industry. So, ha Gary, I'm going to talk to you first with this okay. question. How has the current economy affected your company just overall in general? Um, well, if you want to, uh, uh, go back to uh, 2020 it went at the start of the pandemic. Um, obviously, all the commercial pools got shut down. Um, but all the residential pools became the focus of attention for our entire industry. Um, er uh, no one went on vacation. Everyone stayed home. They had staycations, and it was a huge uh, boon to our industry. We were declared essential workers on day one of the pandemic, and um, the the residential pool industry has just exploded in um, in uh, in all aspects of the business since that time. Uh, and then last year they opened commercial pools again, and so we had. Um, Tremendous number of pools that had had nothing done to them for a year. You know, the um, uh, and, and by commercial pools in California, that means um, swim, you know, aquatics facilities, which are usually municipally owned, um, apartments, HOAs, uh, all, all the different um, uh, homeowners associations. And those are all commercial pools. Very those similar to Florida then. Because yeah. our public pools are basically defined the same way. So that's a lot more than what people realize are commercial public pools. Yeah. So um, none of those pools have had anything done to them for a year. And so the repair business there was just, the, the, it was impossible to keep up. Um, and, and it's not, not just my company, all of my other um, colleagues in our industry around here that I network with, we, we all have the same issues there. Tremendous amount of work. And um, a very challenging uh, time to hire people to do the work. So, all right. So, Julie, I'm going to ask you the same question now from the other side of the fence. How has the current economy affected you guys? Um, like I said pre uh, previously, I was blessed that I was able to stay so busy. I am at the moment the only instructor here teaching. So I was literally in the pool 
from when I got here to when I left, um, five, six, seven days a week, um, going to people's homes as well. And so in that sense, and I made a, and then I did a huge broadcast on the news. I had them come to our facility within a, a week of the country, the world shutting down after we lost a few children, we weren't even closed for five days. Um, and we lost some children in our community to, you know, to backyard drowning, unfortunately. So I went on the news and made a huge plea. Um, I don't think I was really affected, honestly, th- you know, through the economy. I mean, thank God I had my job still the whole time. Um, so I'm super grateful for that. You know, I came to work and made sure that the pools were still running and the chemicals were correct and, you know, did light maintenance and cleaning. Um, again, jumped on five, six, seven Zooms a week um, to learn how we were going to move forward and what to do and the protocols. And, um, and that's so pretty much- it sounds like it kept you pretty busy. It kept me busy. It did. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at blu-rayxl.com. Blu-ray all day. So now I'm going to ask another question and I'll be back to Gary on this one. How has, how have you been affected by hiring? Like, how are you getting people? Um, I'm fortunate um, with the lifeguards that I've had. Many of them are my children's friends or my friend's kids. So they've all come to me over the years and asked for jobs and they're, you know, I work with, the 15, 16, 17 year old population, which I absolutely love working with. And, um, but it has its challenges because of school and all their extracurricular activities that they're involved with. Um, I want to bring back, and I try to stress with them the importance of their job. I get that their schooling is the most important. um, And I'm a parent myself, but the importance of a job and, and making it just as, and oh, sorry, sorry, just as, just as important and a priority um, when you have a shift and you come to work for three, four hours tops, one day a week to please make that a priority in your busy, crazy schedules. And um, because the domino effect when they don't come to work or at the last minute, they forget they had to take a test or they had SAT tutoring or dance practice. Um, lessons are canceled or things that I've done had a meeting or maybe I was off and I come in a lot on my days off for that reason exactly that I don't have enough staff sometimes so so have have you had have you had a hard time hiring people into these positions at your facility um in certain positions for certain times of the day um you know, I have 16 lifeguards on payroll, but they all want to work, you know, on the weekends or one day after school for okay. a few hours a week. So for the most part, my shifts are covered except for a few. And like today I'll be alone from one o'clock till three, three thirty. Um, I know it's not the safest thing. Um, I'm seasoned 30 years in. So I have confidence that I'm okay. God forbid, but I would never want that for my lifeguard. So if I was off today, and that was one of my lifeguards having to do that, then I would come in to be with them because I didn't want them to be alone. Um, And that is one of the best things since COVID that I always have now two lifeguards here at any given time, Um, being that we're nonprofits. There were times prior to COVID that I would only have one lifeguard here for two, three hours. um, And I've hated it. And so I do thank COVID for that. And that's about it (laughs) that I, you know, able to justify having them here. And our, and our, um, what's it called? Minimum wage went up last summer. Only a dollar. I mean, it's it's now $10 an hour, um, which still isn't much, but for a 15, 16, 17 year old, I hope that that's, it's more. And I always paid my lifeguards somewhere 
in the nine dollar range. Um, so awesome. I can't pay them like I'd like, like at the parks and recs where they can go down the street and make $18 an hour. Um, and that's some to, of the challenges of it's a huge challenge industry. and I get it. And I understand if, if they do, but I hope that I give them a fun, positive experience here that for the $10 an hour that they stay for as long as they stay, what can I do? So I'm going to pose the same question to you, Gary. Um, how has it affected hiring? How has it affected you uh, getting people in to work? Well, our, we, our entire industry has a huge labor shortage. And um, that, is the, that is the challenge of the full service industry going forward is recruitment and um, raising the level of professionalism in the industry. Um, uh, when COVID was going on, there were so many programs that people got that it was very, very challenging to hire. Um, the, you know, we would run an ad on one of the national, you know, uh, web platforms. You, you pick which one, there's three or four. Yeah. Uh, we tried them all. And um, we would literally run an ad all summer long and uh, uh, get just a handful of applicants. And, you know, I mean, stuff like, okay, so, um, you know, you need to pass a background check. Uh, well, okay, I'm out. Um, you know, how about you, you have a driver's license, right? Well, no, I didn't read that you needed that. Well, I mean, it was right there in the ad, you know, you must have a clean driving record. You know, it, it was just really, really impossible to hire. Um, I think last year I hired uh, nine people and one remains with me right now. And um, uh, what did it used to be like before COVID and the current economy were at? Well, like before you, COVID and the current economy, you could run an ad for, you know, tra trainee for $15 an hour. And, you know, you'd have five or six applicants and you could weed through and find one that was somewhat promising and would show up for the interview on time and, you know, didn't look like they, you know, slept under the bridge. And, um, uh, you know, they, you, could, you could find a candidate, now, you know. They didn't always work out, but you could find a candidate that you could hire and have some hope that they may be your next uh, good employee. Um, but during 2021, literally nothing. Then at the end of 2021, um, the extended benefits ended, the free money ended in um, August or September. And um, in October, not in September and August when it ended, but in October, uh, we started getting a much better response to our ads and we were able to put a, pe a few people, a few trainees on, um, uh, you know, but, but not at $15 an hour. $15. And we're going to get, we'll get to that soon. Yeah, not, we're going to talk that, about that. Not at that wage, yeah. you know? And so, um, uh, but, but that's the challenge that this whole industry has is, is transitioning from, the image of, you know, the pool guy, you know, and the, uh, you know, flip-flops and tank top to Holly, Hollywood hasn't done anything well for the, yeah, no, that one anybody. magazine that ran all those letters about all those wives that were just waiting to get with the pool guy, you know, yeah. that, that did tremendous damage to our, to our industry. You know, this is a trade. It's a trade just like any other professional trade, be it a carpenter, plumber, um, HVAC, yep. uh, you know, machinist, it's a trade like any other trade. And we, we have to look at it like that. Um, you know, water chemistry is very complex. It's very serious. Yes, it uh, is. You know, it takes a lot of training to be good at it. It takes years to be good at it. And the industry has to recognize that. And, um, and they have to pay like that. And they have to charge like that. And, you know, one of our biggest challenges is, you know, the barrier to entry in this industry is so low. You know, it's, um, you know, a $1,500 pickup truck with, you know, $50 worth of equipment in the back of it from a hardware store. And you, all of a sudden you're in business and you're running around and it's like, oh, yeah, I'll do your pool for, you know, $20 a week. Well, you know. <laughs> Just to get customers and take the them. Chemicals, 
yeah. the chemicals cost $20 a week if you're doing it right. Okay. Yep. I mean, if you're doing it right, you can get by for a while with, with pretty sketchy behavior, but when it goes bad, it goes real bad all of a sudden. And then you've got, um, then you've got a big mess and these guys they have no idea how to take care of that. So. So while you had mentioned it and I'll, I'm going to ask Gary and then I'll come back to you, Julie. Okay. So you had talked a little bit about the wages. So how has um, this whole current economy affected uh, wages um, for you, Gary? Um, we've had to raise our pay scale between, um, oh, 15 to 30% in wage increase just, just to hire uh, anyone. I mean, no one will come um, and apply for a job, at least here in Northern California, uh, at less than $20 an hour. I mean, you can't, wow. you can't get anyone to show up. I mean, they won't, they won't respond to your ad. I mean, I ran an, the ran, ad ran from 18 to 25, no response, raised it to 20 to 25, had nine resumes the next morning. And so Big difference. Um, you have to raise, and like so you said, you know, the, she said, you can go down the street to McDonald's in Florida and get $18 an hour. Yeah. Well, if you go to McDonald's in Northern California, it's 20, 20 to $21 an hour. And if you stay for for four months, they'll give you a brand new iPhone 13. And so, you know, uh, yeah. uh, the it's, entire it's service all industry. competition right now, yeah, all this entire, competition across many industries that have nothing to do with each other trying to right. get employees. Well, yeah, we're, we're competing for the same trainees. I mean, we're not talking about seasoned professionals here. Yeah. We're talking about trainees. And if you have a bigger company like mine, you know, we tend not to hire people that are seasoned professionals because we, honestly, we don't want their bad habits. You know, we want, um, we want, we have a way that we do business. We've been in business for 65 years. We have a way that we do it. And, you know, if you're going to work here, you need to use the way that we do it. We don't care how the last company did it and we don't care how the next company is going to do it. You know, if you work here, you have to do it our way. And um, uh, so we like, we like to train our own people. It just seems to work out better. We've never really had an experience where we hired somebody from another company that really worked out long term. Um, how uh, has how has the fifteen to thirty percent? I think you said wage increase has that affected your bottom line as a business? Well, as a business, you know, you have to you, you have to factor that in. I mean, in, in any industry, in any business, for nonprofit, for profit, any industry you're in. Um, Wages are either your single largest expenditure or they're a close second. And in our, in our business, in the service industry, they are our single largest expenditure. You know, our wages every month dwarf our chemical and, and, and material purchases. Um, so you have to have a price increase. And, you know, that's some people have a hard time doing it. They think they're going to lose all their customers. You know what? If you're in someone's yard and you're doing a good job and you're taking care of their pool and you have a price increase, you're not going to get fired. Um, if you're not doing a good job and you're sketchy and you don't show up on the right day and you don't show up every week and you don't bill properly and you have all these other business issues, mm -hmm. business, and you have a big price increase, they're probably going to look around and see if there's a better option. But if you're in the yard and you're you're professional and you're taking care of your business, you're not going to get fired if you have a reasonable price increase. And a reasonable price increase right now is anywhere between, you know, twenty to thirty percent, really, of your of your of your monthly charge. I mean, chemicals have gone up between fifty and four hundred percent. Which Julie can she's not in her head there. She's affected by that yeah. as well. Yeah, my chemicals have gone up quite a, you know, a little bit in the, over the last few months. And right. I was okay. just told yesterday that, or that a bag of bicarb that was $22 um, is now has gone up $4 a bag. Well, so that's be paying $26. Yeah. Well, yeah. And in our, in, in, in our case, I mean, you're buying it for your own consumption. In our case, we're selling that bag to the client. Right. We can't buy it for 26 and sell it for 26. 
Right. You know? I don't know what they're paying for it. I mean, I'm lucky I do get a good deal on my chemicals, but, and yeah, I don't have a choice. I need to have bicarb or sodium, yep. you know, for the pools. Yeah. You know, you're stuck in, in a hard place because right. you and, have and to if, send it. And as a pool service company, if your if your wages have gone up 30% and your chemicals have gone up anywhere between 30 and 400%, um, you, you, your charge needs to go up 30% and, uh, in order just to, just to remain equal with where you were. And, um, you know, uh, and, and so we've had to have a lot of price increases and honestly, you know, of the hundreds and hundreds of price increases that we've had, I think I can count on one hand, the four people that have dropped our service. And um, we were pretty happy that those four people dropped. <laughs> yeah. They're, 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 they're the, those customers. The ones, they're the ones they're not, they're not, they're not in our little target market that we want. You know, the, the ideal customer uh, profile that we have um, that talks about, you know, people that care, that fix their stuff when it breaks, that pay on time, you know, all those four, they were not in that little box. So awesome. Um, so I'm going to pose the same question to you, Julie. How has um, the current economy and what's going on uh, affected wages? Um, you touched on a little bit earlier, but how has it affected wages um, at your facility? Um, well, like I mentioned earlier, our minimum wage did go up to $10 an hour. So most of my guards were pretty happy that they were at least getting a dollar increase and in raise um, more an hour. It's hard trying to find someone older or in, the, in a different age category that's maybe out of high school or in college or someone even older or more mature. Um, I did just, you know, to, to fill in certain gaps, especially the harder ones to fill uh, the early morning or the mid afternoon when the kids are still in school to, to be able to pay them a fair wage. Um, it's challenging. I did just hire somebody. I offered him 13. He's in his mid twenties, college student, great kid. I offered him $13 and 50 cents an hour. Um, after 90 days, I offered to give him 14. He was loved it. Great. And after two months he quit. So even though I felt that I found somebody to, to, to fill the gap, um, and I'm not one to just hire a body just to hire a body. I'd rather have to come in on my own and do it if I have to, because to me, I just find that's a liability and I don't want to deal with it. Um, left. And it wasn't even the money thing. I mean, you know, he had another job lifeguarding closer to home and some other silly millennial issues. <laughs> <laughs> we could you have know. a whole separate podcast. So, I mean, I mean, topic, literally, right? he, yeah. Um, you know, that as far as like running or working in the aquatic industry, he just didn't understand why he couldn't be on his cell phone at certain hours of, you know, when he wasn't in a guard chair, blah, blah, blah. Again, different podcast. Um, so like, so now like I'll be alone today from one to three o'clock. Need I say more, you know, we, we so just have to deal your, with it. So you're having your difficulties finding people in a certain age group that aren't like high school kids that are okay with the wage that you have to, because I know usually that Parks of Rec nonprofit, you're all kind of in a controlled level is, of wages compared to pool controlled. industry. Like is Gary, you, you can kind of offer whatever you want without like control from a government organization. They have a certain salary broadband. So that's the big difference that Julie has to deal with, I think, compared to the pool industry. I know you're looking at your bottom line as a business and, and stuff like that. But from what I've gathered with the current situation, it's really, really the, the line drawn for the differences is Julie's type of facility. They can only they offer like a certain salary range, correct? Correct. And if I found the right person, I, I mean, I could, even if I found the most amazing person to fill X spot on the, you know, throughout the day, I truly feel it's a rite of passage. So yes, you can go down the street or to any other city pool in our tri-county area, Palm Beach, Miami-Dade, Broward County, and at 17, 18 years old, make $17 an hour, make $27 an hour. I mean, they're out there. I look, 
okay, to see, I, I mean, I've known for years what my competition is as far as what I can afford to pay for a lifeguard. Um, even if I could pay somebody $18 an hour, I am not paying a 15, 16, 17, 18 year old fresh out of the gate. I certify most of my lifeguards. The majority of my lifeguards that work here go through my lifeguard classes throughout the year. Um, and then I personally handpick for a summer camp, but, um, I wouldn't pay them $18 an hour anyways, no matter how amazing they were, because I, I feel that they need to, they, the experience, they need a rite of passage. You know, they need to work their way up to that higher dollar amounts. I mean, if I honestly could pay each of my lifeguards right now, $12 an hour, I mean, that would, I would be thrilled with that. So for you, Julie, how is it, this curtain situation we're in, how has it affected, you've touched on a little bit earlier, uh, retention of employees? I've been lucky there where most of my life purchase stayed with me, whether it's their first time working for me during summer camp and they stay throughout the year. Um, some of them have just worked a summer because then they went off for college. Um, most of them stay because I give a, you know, we have a lot of fun as strict as I am. And I have my certain things that it's my way or the highway. Um, they're good kids. And I really try to give them a positive, fun experience while learning life lessons and learning to be more accountable and responsible. So they, and, and I feel like that they, they stay because we do have a good time together. Um, I buy them lunch. I buy them breakfast. Uh, for the first time, I just got them all hoodies, you know, so that we're all in a uniform that have our JCC logo on them and lifeguard on them. And they love it. It was a thousand dollars I didn't need to spend, but they loved it. Um, we did a field trip for the first time over the summer during camp. We had time where we can leave for a couple of hours and we went to like a huge water park trampoline activity. They had and I will be doing it again this year. They had so much fun. Um, I'm actually shopping online a little bit as we do this podcast for Valentine's Day presents for them, you know, um, you know, little things like that. Just because that, that's some of the ways that you're trying to show my appreciation. Yeah, I buy that, them breakfast. Um, it's you know. your other ways other than the dollar amount they're making in an hour that you're trying to keep and attract people and keep them just, there employed and that kind of thing. Because you're making a good, happy workplace. It sounds like because they're great they kids. Right. And they're great kids. And I know they have busy schedules. I mean, the pressure to get into college today is off the charts. Um, so, and I get it. So I want their time here to be fun and I value their time here. Um, so I, you know, and I want them to stay for as long as they stay. Awesome. Thank you. So same thing for you, Gary, on the other side of the fence. So how has it affected retention your employees and what are you doing to kind of attract uh, people to stay or, you know, to stay longer? So, yeah. So we um, actually implemented um, a more uh, uniform uh, pay structure for our employees, you know, trainees and kind of entry level people are at one level. But once you get to a certain level where we can send you pretty much anywhere, anytime, um, your, your pay is going to jump up quite a bit, like, like maybe five bucks an hour. Um, uh, but if you're going to make the aquatic industry and pool service an actual trade, you're going to have to pay like an actual trade, you know, and, um, you know, carpenters and machinists and plumbers, they make a lot more money than pool service guys do. Um, but in many cases, they work much harder um, okay. and they don't go to the same place every day. They're traveling for work all over within a hundred mile radius, any direction. Um, their commute is on them. Um, and so our, our pay structure from that point is competitive. Uh, but if you're going to make it a trade and you're going to pay people a livable wage, then you have to look at their whole package. You know, we have uniforms that our company pays for. Um, they get paid uh, sick time. They get paid holidays. They get paid vacation. They get um, paid for health insurance. They get uh, paid for retirement, you know, retirement plan with a company match. 
I mean, all those things go into the package so that um, if a person, if a young person does want to make this their trade and make this their career, that they're able to survive, they're able to afford to live here. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they're walking out of here uh, retiring with a with a retirement package of some kind. And, um, you know, this is this isn't it's not easy work, but it's not. I mean, there's a lot of jobs that are much harder than this. Uh, but it's a great job if, if you're somebody that can go out and work and be unsupervised um, in the field and you don't want to, you know, you don't want your boss looking over your shoulder or barking at you. This is a really good way to make a living. And um, in my in my experience, um, pool people, you're going to know right away, you know, within about two weeks, maybe sometimes two days, if they if they like the work or they don't. And I tell everybody that we interview that we bring on as a trainee, I, I tell them, look, it's okay if you don't like it. It, it. But if you don't like it, if you like, if it's like your third day and you're thinking, God, I, this kind of, this kind of sucks. Um, just come and tell me, you know, we'll part ways, no hard feelings. Don't feel like you owe me something. Um, I, what I don't want to do is invest, you know, invest thousands of dollars in you over 90 days and then have you say, you know what? I, I just, it really isn't going to be for me. So, um, uh, what we find is that they, people either really like it or they don't like it at all. And either way is good for us. You know, we'll take a shot. You know, we hired a kid last summer, came in and he, he drove home from his second pool on his third day and said, it's not for me. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, I didn't realize it was going to be um, uh, that I actually so had hot. To it was going to be so hot and there were going to be so many chemicals involved. I said, really? You? You interviewed for an outside job cleaning swimming pools and balancing them chemically, but you didn't think there was going to be any chemicals involved. Well, no, I didn't. I said, okay, well, thanks for telling me, you know, good luck. Good luck in life, young man. Good luck. So and, that, and Ju- Julie's like thinking the same thing. It's like we hand our people are handling chemicals and, and outdoor pools and sitting out in the sun. It, it, it It's, a known fact when you're in the aquatic industry that all those boxes are a check thing for a job you're interviewing for. So it's amazing that they didn't realize that and then took the job and started it. Yeah. Took the job and started it. And then, like I said, the, it was, it happened to be hot. It was in August, you know, it was over, it was close to a hundred degrees. And by the second pool on the third day, he said, ah, this job isn't for me. Got in the truck, drove back to the shop, Came in, thanked everybody for giving him an opportunity. And he said, you know, good luck. See you later. Thanks for telling us. I mean, I was happy because, <laughs> because I didn't have to pay him for three more weeks to find that out. Yeah. You know? Now, do you provide trucks to your employees? Yeah. Do they have company uh, trucks? Yeah. The laws in Florida and the laws in California are very different. Um, um, in, in California, you're almost always an employee. I mean, you can... Uh, and as an employee, a lot of people, a lot of areas of the country, the laws aren't like that. And you can pay per pool or you can pay subcontractors. That and all happens that kind of stuff. a lot down here with our pool company. Yeah. In California, that's all illegal. Um, I'm not saying people don't do it. They can take their chances the way that they want to run their business, but that's not how I run my business. And see if they run the risk of getting caught. That's yeah. Basically. Yeah. 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 Oh, Which trust isn't, isn't the right way to go, guys. Listeners, you know, don't do that. <laughs> In, in, in some states, you know, like workers' comp insurance is optional. You don't have to offer it to the employee. Well, you know, I, I'd love not to have that five $8,000 expense every month, but that's just not the way it is. So, you know, um, you know, in Florida, they clean pools for, for half of what we clean pools for in California, half or less for, or for a third. I've, I've seen that in Facebook groups. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, that's the way it is. But in, but here, if you show up to a job every day, you're an employee. Um, And so you get automatically, you get all the benefits that are associated with that. And, um, you know, we have company vehicles, you know, we provide all the tools, all the chemicals, we provide everything. Awesome. uh, Yeah. And I know it's regionally different for like Florida versus California, just from teaching different people from different parts of the country now and talking to different people within the podcast and that kind of thing. Like you said, Gary, it is different for like Julie 
or any pool service company in Florida versus the West Coast of the United States. So I want to throw that out there that the employment situation we're talking about could be slightly different than what has been spoken about. But generally, in the general sense, we're all kind of dealing with the same thing. And yeah, Lauren, you, you mentioned the Facebook groups, you know, I'm on the same groups as you and it doesn't matter what state you're in, you know, yep. you, you go through and you read the comments and from any of the Sun Belt states, you know, California, Arizona, Texas, Georgia, Florida, yep. you know, up through, you know, um, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, it doesn't matter where the company all the way up to New Jersey. You know, it doesn't matter where the company is. The the unit the issues that we face as an industry are universal, and um, the the sooner that we can, you know, start acting like that, um, you know, the the better off our industry will be. Yep, and I've I'm in some of those park and recs like aquatic. Are you in with aquatic directors and managers Facebook group, Julie? So I've been in there, and it's basically the same thing in their their group with the employment issues. It's just slightly different than the pool industry. You guys, it's driven more maybe by how much, and no, it's really the same, the amount per hour, but I believe businesses have more control as a private business to change their wages than some of the parks and rec that are kind of government owned. Government gets stuck into what's called broadband ranges for their salaries, and they're usually pay a lot less than a private industry would in the general sense. So what they are dealing with is they're trying to battle against, like you said, McDonald's and all these other industries that have raised wages. And people are like, I'm going to go over there then make and make $5 or $4 more an hour than I would working as a lifeguard or an aquatic director or whatever at the county parks and rec pool. So they're all battling the same. You guys are all battling the same general thing overall. Plus two, we have to carry tons of certifications that we pay out of pocket for even my lifeguards. And I charge a fair amount for my lifeguard class. Um, I do cater to a different element that can most of the time pay for, you know, afford what I charge. Nothing out of this world, because I do look at other what other people charge as well. So it's pretty comparable. Um, but just across the board, regardless of whether you're just a lifeguard or myself, um, we have to, we carry multiple certifications. And many people don't want to have to put out that money to only be making $15, $16 an hour. Um, I do know what my, you know, I do work for a nonprofit. Um, This is actually my third time in 30 years working here at this facility, twice in this same position. Um, Once when it first opened, I was in college and I lifeguarded for a couple of months, but, you know, a lot of it is you're not doing it. Don't get me, you're not doing it for, a gigantic salary. Um, I'm doing it for everything that we offer. My love for drowning prevention education for teaching kids how to swim. Don't get me wrong. I would love a gigantic salary, (laughs) but, um, and I've left for a gigantic salary many years ago when I was here the first time in this role. And I have to tell you, it's not all cracked up to, and, and I was miserable, 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 still in the aquatic industry, but not anything in this role, like what I'm in now. Um, and if the grass is not always greener, um, I totally understand what you're talking about. I worked state government for 19 years. And so, you know, you're not working there usually for the best salary. You could go to the private sector, do way better, but it was usually because you cared about being that state servant or, you know, and the cause that you had while you were there. And then they try to give you benefits to offset the salary that they can't pay, but that it's the nature of the differences between you, Julie, and where you're at and Gary, and he's a business owner and that kind of thing. So overall, in the general sense, this employment situation with the economy is affecting us all the same with some differences within different types of organizations. And that's all I wanted to, you know, talk about and have you guys bring forth so that listeners could hear, you know, and if they're new to the 
aquatic industry on your side, Julie, or Gary's side that they kind of walk away and just have a better understand what's going on. And um, especially if they're going to be owning a business or running a facility like you, Julie. So I thank you so much guys for being on the uh, podcast today on this uh, special round table episode. Really appreciate it. uh, Representing each side of the industry. Thank you so much for uh, participating. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lauren. Thank you so much, guys. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks for diving in today with the Let's Talk About Pools podcast. Be sure to follow us on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. And feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts so more aquatic professionals like you can learn about the show. We appreciate it, and we'll catch you in the next episode of the Let's Talk About Pools podcast.